Yeah, but so um, I think we'll make a start. So um, welcome to everybody. And as I say, nice to see some familiar faces, but also really nice to see um, some new faces. Um, and uh, my name for those who I don't know is Rachel Hollis. I'm a children's cancer nurse um, from the UK. And it's a great um, pleasure to welcome everybody here um, to the meeting. Um, I don't quite know why Ayuri says that he's feeling lonely. Ayuri, how can you feel lonely when you're part of a whole screen of um, other um, lovely nurses? So, um, but welcome. Um, my co-facilitator, Carola Friedank, is having some difficulties in joining us. So I'm hoping that Carola may still join us. Um, and if so, I will break off to welcome her. So um, this is the first in a series of, <laughs> no, you're not the only male, Ayuri, um, Mohammed has also joined us. Um, this is the first in a series of three nursing webinars hosted by the um, SIOP Nursing Network. Those webinars are going to talk about um, SIOP, uh, nursing at SIOP in the past, in the present and in the future. Um, and so today we are talking about the history um, of SIOP nursing, a, a long and distinguished history um, of, of SIOP nursing. Um, we're going to talk about the history from probably the sort of early 80s, 1980s and up to 20, the very early 2020s. And then um, our colleagues will be taking the story for, further from there. Um, Carola uh, and a number of those who we're going to hear from today um, have been members of that community for long enough for us to have been recognised by the Nursing Network as legacy leaders, which does make me feel a bit old, but is a very great, great honour um, to be recognised in that way. So we've got um, lots of history to get through. Um, we hope that we might have a bit of time for questions at the end, but we're not confident given how much um, we've got to say whether we will. But if we have time for questions in the end, then we will um, take those and please use the chat to ask any questions. Um, you can also, if there are questions that you want to direct to one or other of our speakers, then you can do that in the chat and they may be able to respond to you um, as, as the uh, webinar is, is going on. Um, so uh, the other thing to say is that this, because we have just an hour and we're going to talk about more than 20 years of a very busy history, we won't be able to cover all of it. Um, and Carola and I are on behalf of the Nursing Network um, engaged in writing an account of our history, the history of nursing at SIOP. And our intention is, um, in fact, our firm plan is to publish that account through SIOP, probably as an ebook um, that we will then be able to keep updated and we will pass on to um, new generations of nurses to keep that updated. Because very important, I think, um, that we are able to think, reflect on and learn from our past as we plan towards our, our future. So, so that will be a record. So things that you think might be missing from today may well be um, in the in the book. So I think without further ado, I am going to um, get started. I'm just thinking if there's anything else I need to tell you. I don't think so. Put any questions in the chat, cameras on or off as you feel comfortable. Um, and um, I'm afraid, you know, that people won't be, you won't be able to speak, but you will be able to put anything into the chat. Uh, so let's get started. I'm just going to share my screen with you all. So um, perhaps somebody would be able to tell me if they can, if you can see the screen okay? Yep. Yes, we yeah. can. Yeah. Great. Um, so the history of nursing in SIOP. And as I say, hopefully my colleague, friend and, and colleague Carola will be able to join us at, at some point during, during the course of of today. Um, we plan today to um, talk about our story through the reflections and the perspectives of um, a number of our nursing leaders of the past and principally the chairs of the nursing committee. And, and you can see here 
um, the chairs of our nursing committee right from the start of um, a SIOP nursing committee. Um, Anne Thompson, who is from the UK, unfortunately wasn't able to be with us here today, but we do have um, Professor Faith Gibson, we have Patty Byron, Tina Baggett and Lisa Morrissey all will be speaking and delighted that we have also have Courtney, our current chair, who today's job is listening, but she will be, I know, taking um, a key part in one of the, the future um, webinars. Because Anne wasn't able to join us today, um, I wanted to just say a, a little bit about the very early days of, of SIOP. Um, so, SIOP as an organization was established in 1969. Um, and it was the initial focus was really on bringing together medical colleagues, so pediatric oncologists from across the world, but predominantly Europe and North America at, at that time, bringing them together in an annual Congress. That started back in 1969, and nurses began to. Um, attend occasionally the SIOP Congress over the intervening um, two decades. And it was in 1987 when SIOP, the SIOP Congress was in Jerusalem, when there was the first formal participation and presentation of abstracts by nurses from um, a small number of countries, but including the United Kingdom, the United States of America. But it was not until 1994 that there was the first um, full one day nursing program at the SIOP Congress in Paris. And in the preparation for that, um, that Congress, then nurses came together from the UK, France, Germany and, and Italy in, in planning the conference, the one day program. And during that program, it was proposed that there should be a nurses committee. And that's when the first committee um, was established uh, in 1994. The first chair, as I say, was, was Anne Thompson. Um, and nursing representation right from those early days included, very importantly, representation on the scientific committee for the annual Congress, um, a position that both myself and Corolla um, were privileged to hold um, during the time that we were part of SIOP. So Anne became chair in 1994, um, and when she stood down from that position, then the person who um, stepped into her shoes was Professor Faith Gibson. So Faith became chair of the committee in 1999, and we're going to hear from Faith now. So Faith, over to you. And Faye, just to flag that Corolla is in the meeting now. Great. Welcome, welcome, Corolla, and we'll introduce you once we've heard from Faith. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Corolla. Uh, hello, everybody. Yes. Um, so I I stepped into uh the shoes, as it were, of Anne Thompson in 1999, um, which means that my um work in the Congress really um, was not until 2000, uh, which was the Congress in Amsterdam. And I'm sorry, I can't get you a better picture of that one uh, from Google Images, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and then I stepped off in 2008, and that was after the co Congress in Berlin. So between all of this uh, was when um, I was active on the Nurses um, Committee. And, and I'm just going to share a couple of things that were um, uh, that particular highlights and then some challenges. And I'm sure they'll be picked up um, as we go through the presentations from everybody today. Um, but I've only got a few minutes. So as Rachel said already, and um, there's a lot I could say, and I've had great fun in the last couple of days looking at minutes, because I'm sure many people on here know I'm quite a hoarder. Um, so I've still got all the minutes, all the things, all the notes from people, um, So which, which has been lovely. Um, so just a couple of things in terms of achievements, um, and these are not necessarily in any particular priority order, but we made a, a link quite early on uh, with our colleagues in the European Oncology Nursing Society, and they had been established for many years as a nurses group. So we thought, well, let's meet with them and see how they established some things. How, what processes did they have in place? What particularly worked for them? And we we're very lucky that Gil Vassal joined us at one of our meetings and was able to to share some of their learning. So we definitely, you know, 
worked with them on a number of um, opportunities, but they helped us to shape the nurses uh, group two in, in SEAL. Um, we contribute to the first EONS core curriculum. So that was ensuring that children and young people's cancer care was embedded within the curriculum that looked at cancer care. That was the first piece of work we did. And then after that, we had joint symposiums, which went on for quite a number of years, actually, where we brought together, we worked with EONS, um, SIOB and ECHO was the kind of conference venue for all of that at the time. Uh, acronyms have all changed, so I've not given you all the names on here. But what that helped us to do was to raise the profile of children and young people's cancer care within the cancer community, which was quite important. Um, so I think that's one of the things. So we strengthened our relationship with um, EONS and that's really continued and other people will talk in the future about why that's still important. Um, so that, some of those early meetings with EONS meant we started to look at some of our processes, I guess. So I'm um, Thompson and everybody on the committee at that time had established some flexible processes and now it's kind of time to formalize some of those things. So we developed a constitution and that was ratified by the board. We formalized the roles of the nurses within the committee, which meant that we had chair, past chair, et cetera, et cetera, following the same lines as our, our, our medical colleagues and other colleagues within uh, SARL. We introduced uh, the open business meeting at the SARL Congress, which meant that even if you weren't a member, you could come along and, and share your views. And that helped us to network much more within our own community. We contributed to the uh, sorry, newsletter um, and we established ways of working with nurses on the local organizing committee. I think it was really not necessarily in, in 2000, but that got better that we always worked with the local organizing committee, always developed the program with them and we formalized that much more. And hence why our network grew so that each year when we worked with the local organizing committee, if we were lucky as what happened with Patty, then people joined our community and then took up um, roles within the community, which was which was great. So I would say some of the things, so this was us starting to formalize some things, um, which I think was a good thing um, at the time. We established a relationship with a uh, European Journal of Oncology Nursing, and that was another way of, of being able to, um, if you like, make our work visible within the cancer community. And what we negotiated with the then, um, it wasn't paediatric blood and cancer then, I think it was medical and paediatric oncology, because I think that title has changed, but we had it agreed that we could double publish abstracts. So we chose abstracts from our Congress and that was shared within the European Journal of Oncology Nurse, and we encouraged people to publish their work there. I was an associate editor um, for many years and Penelope Perget has now taken up that baton. So we still have um, representation within the journal, which is, which is great. And then I just wanted to uh, focus on just a few of the challenges, really. Um, and some of these have, th have definitely got better. So you can see uh, over time trends, I think. So making change happen, understanding the organizational structures that were less transparent back then. So for those who are new members of the community, there are many things which are absolutely crystal clear in terms of how the Congress is organized and who, how people get involved in putting abstracts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was less clear uh, at the time. We were helped hugely, and I tried to find a picture of Rosalind, who was the administrator at the time, the one and only administrator, who was hugely helpful in all of these things. And I couldn't find a photograph of her, so I'll carry on looking. Um, but what uh, then, the other challenge I think was about making sure that our visibility, so we did quite a lot of work on visibility within the cancer community, but actually keeping nursing, and the Site Nurses Committee visible within SIOP was a particular challenge. Again, that has all, I think, got um, easier. And that's really from the amazing work by lots of people um, who are on this call today. And then one of the things that um, I spectacularly failed uh, to do in my role as chair was to negotiate any kind of financial support. Um, so the majority of the SIOP Nurses Committee at that time was self-funded. Um, and then the um, expert member on the scientific committee was funded, but everybody else uh, self-funded. So I wasn't able to negotiate any of that. But from some notes with a meeting I had with um, uh, Alan Craft, president, I can't even remember which year now, I'm sorry, I should have looked that up. He um, said to us, we agreed in our meeting 
that we needed to be patient, firm, and decisive. And I wanted to finish there because I think we have continued to be firm and patient and decisive, which I think has got us to where we are now. So thank you to everybody on the screen. Um, and I look forward to hearing it from everybody else. Thank you. Thank you very much, Faith. And um, I'm going to pass over now, first introduce, and then pass over to my co-moderator, um, Corolla, who's now on the call after some difficulty. And Corolla, I think you need to unmute. That. Okay. okay. So Oops, hello. <laughs> Corolla, we're not hearing you at the moment. Okay, but now I hope, is it? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, yes, we can. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so sorry for being late. Thank you, Faith. Um, I, I just would um, like to put some um, some highlights um, at the from, from the meeting in Yokohama 1998. And Faith, I'm Pretty sure you have been there, haven't you? Wasn't really sure. <laughs> um, and what was uh, really impressive at the meeting at Yokohama at 1998 was um, the local team was Yoshiko and Michiko. Um, and it was an unbelievable um, hospitality during that meeting. We had a nurse beside us during the whole time. And that was really, really great. Um, we also visited uh, uh, Kanawa um, Hospital. And the specialty over there was that it's a bit like a boarding school because the children at that time have been to the hospital for about a year or even longer because of the distances and because both parents had to work. For, for the um, Society of Pediatric Oncology in Japan, um, the influence for, from SIOP was really great. They funded um, a pediatric oncology nurses group at that time. A little bit later, they established a paper for pediatric oncology nurses. Um, and Yoshiko, um, professor, uh, she was a professor over there, and she visited with about 12 um, students every meeting since Japan. And um, she, they stayed there, and she sometimes translated simultan because um, they didn't speak English very well, and that was very great. Even with the language barrier, a kind of friendship developed, um, and that showed that it is more than one way to communicate, and SIOP really brings together so many people all around the world, and the common goal is to give the children as much support as possible. Um, that was one about um, Japan, and the other thing which was in this period was a SIOP meeting in 2000 in Amsterdam. There we had for the first time uh, the pleasure to welcome about 38 nurses from 15 law and middle income countries. That was from Indonesia, Africa, India, Central Africa, Africa. And that was really, really interesting again to have these communication with the nurses. And that showed us that's very important to discuss in smaller groups because that makes it much, much easier for the people. Um, so in a way, um, for the next meeting, we started really to include roundtable discussions in the meetings, and had, we had really inspiring discussions at these meetings. Okay, so thanks for that. Um, I would like now to pass over to Patty Barron from Vancouver, from Canada. Welcome, Patty. Thank you. Carola, Faith, Rachel, everybody. Um, Rachel, do you got my slides? And you just full screen them? Thanks. So um, thank you. And it's wonderful to be here. Um, I says I'm from Vancouver, but um, just less than a year ago, I've moved up to the Okanagan in British Columbia. So I live on this lake now in the middle of BC. And um, I did retire a year and a half ago. So my recall is not quite the same. I don't have the same hoarded notes that 
Faith still has. I did find some CEOP newsletters that I'd maintained. So I was able to pull things together. So um, looking forward the slide. And so really I was the, the chair from 2008 to 2012, but I began my journey back in, as um, Faith said, um, when I arrived in Oslo in 2004, my, our local physician said, Patty, I need you to come to Oslo. We're hosting PSYOP in, in Vancouver in 2005. And so I arrived in Oslo, unknown to anybody, and just arrived and found these people, Faith and um, Corolla. I can't remember, Rachel, if you were there then, um, and many others. And it just sort of immediately formed this, this bond and this interest in this in immense global collaboration of pediatric oncology. And so um, what went from there um, to my journey through um, attending meetings from then on. And then in um, 2008, I took over the chair from, from Faith. And this collaboration, is, as we all know, continues. And I really feel that my slides aren't quite as organized as Faith's into things that are just a lot of random thoughts. Um, really um, building on the strengths that um, Faith um, talked about having been developed, such as sharing best clinical practice through our abstracts research and education and those were were key i think the abstracts were enormous and um, continuing to support those coming from everybody around the world no matter you know what their work was or what um, level of development they were in with their work and um, through that um, promoted and supported development of educational programs for nurses in all seop countries and that's been a big key as well as um, initiating, supporting, and sharing nursing research in pediatric oncology across the world. And so those such as Faith and Tina and others that do a lot of nursing research, and there's millions of others, but um, I just really appreciated that um, level of, of bringing that to the forefront and being able to share that at a scientific committee such as this globally. And um, my other slide, little words are gone there, but I think that was just about developing um, taking these abstracts that I talked about and developing our, our nursing program from the abstracts and from the abstracts, um, pulling up the themes uh, for the year and then developing the Congress based on those abstracts. And that was sort of our, our key work there. Um, next slide. And so I've got lots of pictures. They're random. They don't go in any order either, just from different Congresses. Really, um, I think as Faith talked about in the patients and um, being um, welcomed and continuing the nursing participation and leadership in, in many CEO working groups throughout the years and being able to have nurses provide keynote lectures or roundtables discussions like um, Carola mentioned for nurses were key in having um, nurses from around the world be able to speak up in smaller groups and share their stories. And then having leadership on the CEOP Scientific Committee was, was really key and having that person there. And during my tenure, I was really, really fortunate that I worked with um, Gabby Kalamanis, the, the chair of CEOP, um, a physician from Germany. And she was instrumental in making sure that I was present everywhere all the time. And that was um, huge because when I was very fortunate to be invited to a bunch of pre- um, pre-Congress meetings to, to sort of set the stage for, for what we were gonna do in the next meeting in the next venue. And so that was very, um, that was really a, a building point. And then being, um, my next slide, um, really again got to helping increase the nursing voice in the scientific sessions and with the SIOP board. That was really key you know, during that time. And then continuing our joint sessions with other membership groups of SIOP, such as um, the Psychosocial Oncology Group, um, the, in particular the Parents and Survivors, those were really key. And they really, um, I think that's the, the, um, the key of um, SIOP is the, the global collaboration, but not just, not just physicians, not just nurses, but parents, survivors, um, social workers, psychologists, everybody in the community being participating in one scientific um, venue was, was really critical. And then uh, as always increasing uh, through the business meetings as Faith talked about and, and um, doing a lot of recruitment for increasing nursing membership in SIOP globally. And um, so those were my key points just highlighting. I think that was my end of my slide, but there's a few more pictures. And I go back to Amelia, that was Amelia was the other nurse in Carola and Faith that I met in Oslo. 
that's the first picture on the left there. Um, they were instrumental in um, welcoming me and supporting me. And this just became the, the highlight of my career that I retired from a few years ago. And I just want to thank everyone. Patty, thank you so much for, for sharing those, those memories. And I think particularly that showing the... Um, Tina, could you just hang on for a couple of minutes, if that's OK? Oh, certainly. You... Certainly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, Corolla's going to just come back in with a couple more reflections before uh, before moving on to, to you. So, uh, can I say one more thing? Of course you can, think, Patty. Uh, this, Corolla mentioned, you know, the one time, I think, back in Amsterdam, there was 35 nurses. And um, I just had my notes. We had over 200 nurses from 25 to 30 countries in one of the last congresses I was at. And I just think that's, that just shows the, the movement and the support and the importance of this meeting for, for people around the world. So that was just my other note that I made. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, Patty. Um, in, that, in that period, it was um, the Sai of Ghana to, um, 2010, which I would like to highlight. Um, that was the time when the nurses has been part of the council um, committee. In that time, we had the, um, the continental meeting in Africa, and in Ghana and Africa, we had the first three-day parallel nurses meeting during the continental conference. Um, there we had invited, or they invited 53 nurses all around Africa. Um, and that was really, really great. The first meeting was combined with um, parents groups. It was highly supported by the physicians over there, Lorna Renner from Ghana and Peter Hessling from South Africa. Um, and I remember that we have been prepared with presentations about nutrition administration of medication, <laughs> palliative care, and so on. Um, but after the first time, um, we changed overnight together with Peter Hessling the presentations to workshops focused on the need in the different African countries and on the individual resources, because we really found out that there are so much knowledge um, in the nurses in the Africa with an African nurse and that it's very important that they have the possibility to talk to each other. Uh, that was really individual and creative, um, the knowledge of the nurses. For example, with the pain management, if you have no drugs and nothing around. To see these local nurses in the workshops was great. The exchange in between the groups was very, very impressive um, for us. And I'm happy that we followed up with that, but you will hear more about that later on. So thank you. And now I just would like to hand over to Tina Baggett from California. So welcome to you, Tina. All right, just a moment. Yes. And all right. So I have uh, minimal slides, but I shall just uh, talk a little bit about what had occurred during the years I served. And um, I think uh, probably the most significant of which I did not instigate, but was in happy to join in on was the um, in the first set of the Santa Fe Esquire, uh, My Child Matter Nursing Grants. And um, so that really gave an opportunity for so many uh, nurses from low and middle income countries to have the resources needed to get a project up and running. And um, many of you have seen the reports that have come out and the significant projects that have been accomplished. So um, that was inspiring uh, to see that come to fruition and it has morphed over the years. Um, and uh, many of you know that there's a current call out. So um, then um, one thing that actually happened as well was um, that the nurses from low and middle income countries for the first time did get uh, a reduced membership fees during that time period. Uh, we also, started having some of the supportive care committee joint uh, pre-conference workshops uh, during that time. And it was a great opportunity to share resources and learn uh, and expand uh, our repertoire with that group. Um, but uh, one thing that's been alluded to that's been a challenge uh, to this point, uh, but again, luckily there's a happy ending um, that uh, we were, struggling with trying to get a full seat at the table with the board of directors uh, at, during that time I was there, um, that we just had uh, 
uh, an opportunity to share a, a report, but really weren't uh, full on within the board of directors. So uh, you shall see as an accomplishment in later terms. Uh, so uh, the picture I have in, faded in the background um, just kind of highlights that um, we've had great opportunities to uh, gather together from all over the world. And um, especially um, I had the fun of sharing lodging with me, uh, my colleagues from all over where we would share uh, an Airbnb. Uh, and so that's just uh, one of the many photos that I would find from that. Um, but um, as far as my involvement with SIOP, um, I don't know if Julia has had an opportunity to make it here or, or if the conflict that she has with the other SIOP uh, fully uh, exceed, you know, goes along with this meeting. But uh, many of you know that Julia Chalinor is such a fantastic uh, instigator in getting folks involved in uh, SIOP. And so she was the one who invited me to and come to my first meeting in Vancouver. And um, that uh, she's really been so resourceful in getting uh, folks to meetings. Uh, and then uh, once I got to SIOP, uh, was uh, dragged along into activities through uh, the encouragement by Faith and Rachel and Carola and then Patty as well. So um, appreciate all those efforts uh, over the years. And then I just have uh, one more photo, which was the first group of uh, awardees from the My Child Matters uh, back in 2016 uh, group. So I, that's all I have, but we'll keep questions at the end. Thank you, Tina, um, for your presentation. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Tina. And I think um, you talked about um, encouraging nurses, particularly from low and middle income countries, um, attending. And, and Carola mentioned earlier the conference in Ghana and prior to that mentioned sort of Japan as well. And, and I, I think that, um, Faith, if we go back to think about Faith Patty, the attendees at our first PSYOPs, which were very much from from Europe, from um, and actually predominantly from Europe. And then we had more nurses coming from, from North America. And Tina, you've talked about Julia encouraging you, Patty. I saw a comment from Linda saying how Patty had welcomed her to a meeting. But I think when we now look at um, the attendance of, of at SAOP, it's very, it's very different. And, and I don't know, Tina, if you'd like to reflect on that for just a moment or two. Perhaps well, um, I did. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That, you know, just the, um, I think the strong work of what was uh, initially called, uh, what was, what was the low and middle income countries used to be called the uh, uh, Pediatric Oncology something. in Developing oh, Countries. I mean, countries, yes. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that um, nurses group was really phenomenal. Uh, all, all you who have here who have led uh, especially Linda Bromovitz has done such a phenomenal job of bringing folks into uh, the meetings and encouraging their attendance. And um, so uh, I think the round tables as mentioned is also a really great way of promoting attendance. I've been shocked at uh, sometimes we've had undergraduate nursing students in attendance at the meetings who will not only uh, participate in the roundtables, but be the spokesperson and get up from a large crowd and report back on what they had heard and and whatnot. Um, and those are some of our real go-getters um, who obviously are attending an international meeting in their undergraduate studies. So um, it's 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 a great place to foster leadership. Yeah. And I'd I'd just like, if I may, before we come on to Lisa, to just quickly share a screen which actually shows that sort of growth, not only in our nurse membership, which Patty was um, mentioning earlier, but also in the different countries that that nurses came from. So if you just bear with me for one minute, I'd just like to um, to show you that. So, you know, having been so in the middle of the 1990s, these were the countries that mostly nurses attended SIOP from and certainly were, were members. So from Europe, from North America, from Australia. 
Um, and we only had a small number of, of nurse members. But then in 2022, we had 335 nurse members from these 63 different countries and seeing the um, attendance at, at Congress um, coming from much more across the globe, I think has been a, a real credit to um, the leadership generally of, of SIOP and to people like um, Lisa Morrissey, who we're going to come to next. Just before we come to you, Lisa, um, I just want to mention Penilla Pergert, who um, came between Tina and Lisa um, as our chair of our nursing committee. Um, Faith's already mentioned Penilla as being an associate member of um, of the of the Journal for Oncology Nursing. Um, Penilla was one of our shortest lived chairs, but that's because she moved across into the really vital um, position of uh, being on the steering on the scientific committee, which at that time was going through quite a lot of changes, and we needed to have somebody um, with greater academic credibility than than I brought to the role, for example. And Lisa uh, and Penilla was able to move across into that role, um, and so Lisa stepped in as chair in twenty eighteen, I think. Lisa, so um, we're now going to hear from Lisa about her time as chair and some reflections on that. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. And I want to say what an honor it is to be here today with so many great nurses and nurse leaders in pediatric oncology. Um, my first experience with SIOP was in 2010 when it was held in Boston. I think Patty had a, a picture there. And um, a lot of the people on this call, that's when I first met you. And I really feel like SIOP is so much about the personal connections that you make in the network. And, you know, many people I met back in 2010 have, have been so influential to me and, and it's really just such an incredible network. Um, so let me share my, oops. Uh, can you see, you, can you see my slides? Yeah, okay. All right, so um, yes, and um, I do wanna mention too that um, after attending in Boston in 2010, I also attended in London in 2012 was when, um, Rachel, Sarah Day, and others led, and Faith led a um, pre-conference session focusing on education and preparation of pediatric oncology nurses. And that's where the baseline standards for pediatric on oncology nursing really rose out of that session. It was so exciting to be part of that. Um, and in 2017, actually Tina Baggett reached out to me and said, there's a position on the nurse steering committee, would you be interested? Um, and so I, I did join as a member um, in 2018. Um, at that time, we were preparing for the Congress in Kyoto, Japan. Seems like a long time ago now. Um, and uh, Pranilla was chair, and I know Corey's on the call too. I remember she was very involved in the planning. Um, I remember my first impressions were that um, we were collaborating with the Japanese Society of Pediatric Oncology and Nursing there was a very significant language barrier in the planning, but I was so impressed with how everyone forged ahead. We worked through the language barrier and planned a great session. Um, some other things that were going on in 2018 is that's when the Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer was launched. Um, and so there was really great excitement at the 2018 Congress about that um, and really, not only lots of engagement from all different disciplines, but recognition from nurses that, hey, we have to be part of this. Nursing is the, the um, biggest workforce in pediatric oncology, and we've got to make sure that the nurse's voice is heard. And there's been lots of people do doing great work to make sure that happened. Um, it was also the 50th anniversary of PSYOP in Kyoto. Um, and um, that year, Faith Gibson was, I believe, the first recipient of the Nursing Lifetime Achievement Award. And I was looking back on my notes, Faith actually presented a history of PSYOP nursing at that Congress. Um, uh, and a lot's happened in the five years since she did that presentation, um, but I'll talk a little bit about. And uh, as mentioned, Pranilla um, at that time transitioned to the Scientific Committee, which was a really important role for her to fulfill and asked me to take over as chair, which I was a little intimidated, but um, had great support. <laughs> um, so then in 2019 in Lyon, France, um, at that time, I would say that for the nurse, uh, nurse steering committee, we really began to think about, you know, 
my experience with SIOP had always been that um, the nursing track was very separate from the scientific community in SIOP. And there was, you know, the there was SIOP and then there was the nursing program and not a lot of crossover. And I think at this point, we really started recognizing that nurses need to be integrated into the SIOP community. We have so many talented nurses, nurse leaders and nurse scientists. And we started thinking, you know, we really have to make sure that there's a nurse who's a keynote speaker every year and that nurses are represented in meet the experts and um, abstracts and presentations. Um, and so that year, um, uh, it was very exciting that Sarah Day was the key, Dr. Sarah Day was the keynote speaker on the baseline standards. Um, Sarah was one of my mentors and very, very influential in creating the baseline standards. Um, and so it was really exciting that um, we had a nursing representation as a keynote and have had a nurse every year since. Um, that year, Dr. Julia Schaliner um, was a recipient of the Nursing Lifetime Achievement Award, and we all know that Julia has just been incredibly influential in um, building the nursing infrastructure at SIOP and representing nursing and advocating, uh, bringing people together. Um, she's been, she's really been a force. Um, so then 2020 came and what a year it was. Um, first of all, it was the International Year of Nurses and Midwives. So we had a lot to celebrate and we're very excited about that. Um, and then of course, we all know that in March of 2020, the world changed and our plans got a little bit disrupted. Um, but one thing that the pandemic did do was highlight um, how important nurses are as evidenced by the response to the uh, global COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we had to make a very rapid transition from the live Congress in, in Ottawa to virtual. I was just getting the hang of putting a conference together and, and then the uh, we changed to virtual. Um, I would say that the board really did a remarkable job in, in collaboration with the SIOP um, leadership in Kenneth to, to make that happen. Um, it was, a lot of uncertainty. Nobody really knew how it was all going to play out, but I would say the transition was successful. It wasn't the same as being all together, as Julia would always say, twice the work and half the fun, but we did it. Um, and there was a lot of really great silver linings to the virtual Congress. One was that we brought in so many new members. Once the world really got connected with Zoom and other virtual options, um, we realized that a lot of people could attend that weren't able to um, before the pandemic. Um, between For nursing scholarships, the cost was much lower. So we brought in many, many more nurses. So this was like a really great opportunity to increase the membership and the visibility and the accessibility of the um, of PSYOP nursing to nurses from around the world. Um, this year, M Marilyn Hockenberry was the keynote speaker. Um, and I want to give a shout out to Linda Abramovitz and uh, um, Liz Snyderman, who did a, a lot of great work creating a, a, a newsletter called Making Global Connections um, and sharing stories from the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I would say that, you know, nursing really felt the the impact of, of COVID, uh, a lot of nurses were struggling not only with taking care of their patients and keeping things going in their hospital, but their own personal um, uh, disruption with caring for family members. And um, so this was kind of a really um, amazing way to, to make sure that nurses, like we're still here, we're still together and we're still here to support each other. So that was that was really exciting. Um, uh, Rachel was the Lifetime Achievement Award um, uh, winner that year. And um, the other really landmark thing, the happy ending to Tina's story was that a nurse was officially appointed to the SIOP Board of Directors and we're not leaving again. Um, I, I think that it's really important to have nursing rep representation there. And, um, you know, having Kathy as the uh, president during this time, she's such a great friend to nursing and she really supported that. Um, so lots and lots happened in 2020. Um, and then in 2021, we were all excited. Well, at least we can go to Hawaii. Um, and then the second, <laughs> you know, second big wave of COVID made us realize that that wasn't going to happen. Um, so we, we planned our second virtual Congress. Um, the exciting thing was in, um, in 2020, there were over two, 
I think there was around 240 nurses who participated. The numbers dropped in 2021. Part of that, I think, was from the fatigue of the pandemic and, um, you know, just having the bandwidth to write abstracts and submit, um, uh, you know, scientific uh, and educational projects was not quite there. But the membership um, after 2021 got close to 300, which is really incredible. Um, we again had a nurse keynote speaker, Elrika Kretschberg was our keynote speaker. And that was also the year Julia Schaliner got appointed to be the secretary general of SIOP. She was the first nurse to hold a um, official leadership position on the SIOP board. And we all know she's been amazing. Um, and the, also that year um, we changed the um, Nursing Lifetime Achievement Award to the Nursing Leadership Award. That was really an inspiration of Rachel and others. Um, knowing that in, in many parts of the world, pediatric oncology nursing is a relatively new specialty. Um, and we did not want to exclude anybody by saying like you had to have spent your lifetime doing pediatric oncology nursing. Um, there's so many great leaders around the world, some who maybe, you know, pediatric oncology nursing was not recognized as a specialty. So that year, Rihanna Panjwani was the uh, recipient of the Lifetime or the Nursing Leadership Award. And it was it was just so great to honor her. Um, I, others have mentioned that I think in pediatric oncology nursing, it is always, or it seems that it's always nurses that are pulling people together and collaborating. And I think we've done such a, uh, a great job of collaborate, the nursing network collaborates with Young PsyOp, Cancer Point, I think Neil's on the call, um, the global network, PPO, supportive care, nutrition, th there's been so many great connections with the nursing network and other, other networks throughout PSYOP. Um, and I think that will just continue to grow and, and make all our networks stronger. Um, Linda Abramovitz has continued the work with the Baseline Standards Task Force. And I think that the Baseline Standards always has a very strong um, presence and um, visibility at the Congress, which has been wonderful. Um, another thing that happened in 2021 was that um, the World Health Assembly um, convened and Julia had the opportunity to speak at that assembly and address the burden of the pandemic on the delivery of pediatric oncology nursing care which was also a really exciting um, opportunity. Um, so in 2022, the chair has transitioned over to Courtney Sullivan with um, uh, Marilyn Hockenberry as the um, scientific committee representative. Courtney and Marilyn are just doing amazing things already. I, I'm just so impressed with how, um, how forward thinking they are and just uh, continuing to move nursing forward, the presence of nursing at PSYOP and the, um, the network and collaboration, making it just so much stronger. So I think we have a, a very bright future ahead with uh, Courtney and um, Marilyn and all the, the great members on the nurse, nurse steering committee at this time. Thank, thank you, Lisa. And um, we're not going to let Courtney speak today because her time will come in the present and the um, future webinars the the next two in the in the series but Lisa I wonder how what do you think um having a nurse on the board and not if we think about actually having the the chair of the nursing committee joining the board of directors what difference do you think that's made um I I think it's really just making sure that the voice of nursing is part of the decision making um I think that sometimes it gets forgotten. And uh, as I said, you know, nursing always was a little bit of a side side uh, thought to the PSYOP community, not sometimes not intentionally. Um, so I think having a nurse there to just be participating in decisions made about the future of PSYOP um, with our increasing membership, it's really important that to have nurses represented, represented in that um, in those decisions. So I, I think that's probably the biggest thing. And, um, you know, nurses have a lot of great ideas and are very creative and um, sometimes think of things that our medical colleagues might not. So. Thanks, Lisa. I might ask the same question to Faith as someone who's um, was 
you know, on the in the chair role at that very early stage, and and still very actively involved in in say up now and faith. You know, what difference do you think? Because I, you know, I think sometimes we can think, well, you know, that's great, but kind of, you know, what what's the impact of that? I guess I, I, I'm I'm probably not going to answer your question straight away, um, because what I'm thinking as you were talking, Lisa. You really can't take your foot off that pedal, can you? You know, and I like the way you said we're there to stay, which is great. Um, but we can't ever think that 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 is what will happen. We have to continually um, uh, show that our visibility and what we do contribute makes a difference. So I guess um, I think having a say, a, a greater say, maybe is in the scientific committee and influencing uh, the keynotes, the expert meetings, all of those things, I think are really important, which is where nursing has that visibility. Um, so I, th I think it's, it's, it's helped with the whole culture, I think, probably, if I was to say anything. By placing nursing there, it means that the culture of the organisation definitely does feel more now multi-professional instead of a group that was predominantly medical congress it was about children's cancer treatment the care now i think is really being raised so that's what i would say i think so i think it's an important thing that we keep lisa i think you're absolutely right we must maintain that and grow that really taking it forward yeah thank you rachel Thanks, Faith. And I might see if Tina or Patty want to come in on that question before handing back to um, Carola for some final words. So, um, I think I can just speak of what it was like without uh, a voice. And, you know, we were having issues just stripped away. Like there was a, a time where there was an attempt to not not intentionally, but to change the voting uh, options and um, we were about to take a step backwards. So um, just keeping that presence there, I think is so critical. Thanks, Tina. And I would just say, I just think um, I'm so excited to see that it's moved forward in this way. I just felt like I was just stepping on the tip of the iceberg, uh, getting you know my foot in the door in some ways um, at different aspects of, of developing the meetings and, and, and working with the scientific committee and the chair of SEOP. So I think um, to see that it's moved, you know, with that patience and and persistence, and um, as Faith all mentioned, that that's just critically important. You can't you can't give up and just keep moving that forward inch at a time. It's exciting. What was it, Faith? Patience, determination, and firmness. Was that the three things yeah. that that we have to do? Uh, yes, patient, firm, and decisive. Patient, yeah. firm, and, and decisive. Those are critical. Patty, and I, I think, think that was, I think, the patience, yes. <laughs> I think getting just a toe even, in the even, door is critical to getting the door open. Yeah, mm. Being there, even though it wasn't at the fully at the table, but being there and having that patience just to sit through and be present was, was an important step. Mm. Absolutely. So. Back to Corolla. Corolla. Thank you, Rachel. It's just difficult to put so many years in just one hour but um, in a way we, we really managed. <laughs> um, and still, because we don't have that much time anymore, but if you have any questions, um, you just can talk and ask a question now, a few, or you can still, um, Rachel mentioned that, um, write that in the chat. Um, Tessie already um, wrote the, the links for the registration <clears throat> for Ottawa and for the nomination for the Cyp Nursing Leadership Award. So if you need that, just have a look at the, at the chat, please. So, um, Rachel, you didn't see any, any questions also, did you? Okay, so we are, we are ne nearly finished, just two minutes, and that's um, unbelievable that that worked. <laughs> so thank you again to all the, uh, to all the speakers um, and for the, for the view you gave all of us in the last, um, about the last years. And thank you especially for the, the audience. It's great to see some people again, which and, and know um, it's the same for you that you've seen people here on the screen you haven't seen for a long time. Um, 
So thanks a lot for it, for that. And I really look forward and ho I hope you too for the next, for the upcoming uh, two webinars about the present and future. And um, at that stage, I'd really like to, to um, thank again to all the people who are um, involved in all these, um, on all these work. And, um, and I really hope for the next upcoming years for SIOP that we have really, that it will grow again and to bring um, the people together. So thank you so much. Um, anything else? No, thank you so much. And um, I hope you have a good, whatever, day and evening, depends on the time uh, in your country. And I hope to see all of you and, and some more. So uh, bring, the, bring the, um, the link further on to other people um, and to see you to the next webinar. Bye-bye, and thank you. Could I ask our speakers, yeah, sorry. To stay, ask our speakers to stay?